Hi green lovers, is there a spot in your garden that's extra shady but you've been trying so hard to figure out what to put over there that you can brighten it up with some color all season long all the way through your first frost with minimal effort? Well, then you should consider coleus. Now I have 17 beautiful coleus plants that I started from seed this year and I am in the process of up-potting them. And today's video I want to share with you six important things that you should know about this awesomely beautiful gorgeous plant and why you should be growing it in your garden and how you can have it not just this year but next year and every year after. Oh and by the way I actually grew coleus in those gorgeous green stalks that you see behind me last year. I'll try and put some pictures at the end of this video but let's go ahead and get into transplanting these into bigger pots and I'll tell you about what I think you should know before you get into growing coleus. Now I have 17 plants here and I've gone ahead and prepped all of these one gallon pots, there's 18 of them with potting soil because I'm also going to be transplanting, let me show you, some freesia. Now I got this from Lowe's yesterday in the clearance section. You should check out the clearance section if you happen to shop at Lowe's. They always have a clearance section for plants and there's some pretty cool plants that they sell at really reduced prices. I got this for 75% off, so it was about two bucks. And I've never grown freesia before, so this is an experiment for me. Oh, it is so fragrant and it grows well in Mediterranean climates like where I live, which is Northern California zone 9B. So I'm going to try and get this to continue to bloom for a little bit more and then come back year after year because guess what? It's a perennial. So let's up pot this one as well. So I go through a lot of potting soil. I have a large garden and I get a lot of stuff started from seed. And here's a little tip when you're transplanting, if you want to save some money on potting soil, I make my own, that's one way to save. But in addition to that, I've been growing soil in my garden for many years now. And what I do is rather than use an entire bag and fill up potting soil from something that is purchased or even something that I've made on my own, is I fill up most of it, maybe about a half to two thirds of the pot with just soil from my garden from one of my planter beds. And then the top, maybe two, three inches, I put some good potting soil that has hopefully some good fertilizer, etc., to kickstart the plant and get it going. But yeah, that's a good way to save money on potting soil is just use the soil that you've been building all these years in your garden. It is the best soil. I know that my soil is really, really good after working on it for a good five years. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about coleus is that they are shade loving plants. And when I say shade loving, I don't mean shade tolerant as in they love the sun, but give them a little bit of shade in the afternoon. No, you actually want to plant them in a part shade location. They will fry in the sun. These leaves are very, very delicate. And if you put them in a full sun location, particularly in locations like where I live, which is Northern California, where it gets to 103, 105 during summer, these things just will not make it no matter how much you water them. So you want to plant them in a part shade location. The next thing you need to know about these plants is they need a lot of water. Plant them in well-draining soil and give them plenty of water. Overwatering is much better than underwatering any day when it comes to coleus. If you look at the stems, they are thick. The leaves are water filled. Everything about this plant, most of it is water. So you want to keep this super well watered. I'd recommend irrigation if you can do that. But if not, during your really hot summer months, you might actually have to come out twice a day to water it. And for sure, you'll have to water it every single day. The third thing is that this is probably one of the easiest plants to propagate from cuttings. In fact, this is a little seedling and I haven't even up-potted it, but it's got two shoots. I'm going to cut off one of these shoots and just remove the bottom leaves. And then I just stick it in some soil, put it in a shady location for a few days, and this thing is going to root. That's it. That's all it takes to get a new coleus plant. So another thing you need to know about coleus is that it grows super fast under the right conditions. So make sure that you give the plants a proper amount of spacing. And I usually do about 12 to 18 inches between plants and know that it's going to fill up those spaces. And then as you make these cuttings, you can continue to fill out any blank spaces that you have 
with the cuttings because they root so fast and they grow so fast. Now know that as these plants grow larger, they will eventually at a certain point in the season, usually towards the latter part of uh, summer, they will start to produce very large flower spikes. Now the flowers are not what you're growing this plant for, you're growing it for its beautiful foliage. And so you do need to clip off those flowers as soon as they emerge. In fact, I like to trim my plant back pretty frequently. It helps the plant maintain a more bushy look. And then once it starts to flower, especially, it gets very unwieldy looking and leggy and it just doesn't look good. So pay attention to those flower spikes as soon as they appear and pinch them right off and your plant will look beautiful all season long. And finally, the last thing that you need to know about coleus is that it is extremely frost tender. At the slightest frost, your coleus plant is going to die. So you want to make sure that as your frost date starts to approach, you have taken ample cuttings and you have planted them up and you've got them going. And then guess what? It grows wonderfully as a house plant. So you can take it indoors and keep it in with a limited amount of filtered light. It'll thrive throughout your winter as long as the temperature maintains a decently warm room temperature. It should do just fine. It won't grow as well as it does outside, but it will definitely stay alive and it will definitely look pretty all winter long. And then come spring, you get to plant it out in the garden and you don't have to start it from seed. Now, I usually start from seed, but that's because I like to have different varieties of coleus that I'm playing with. I will tell you that starting it from seed, while it's not too hard, it takes forever to get those teeny tiny plants growing from those extremely teeny tiny seeds up to a decent size where you can up pot them. In fact, this I planted, I think in December, it's now May and they're about this size. So now they're gonna start growing very quickly from now on, but it does take a while to get to size where you can transplant it. So if you can get cuttings from friends, that's the best thing. And don't forget to share cuttings once you have your own stock. By the way, if you wanna know how to start coleus from seed, I've got a video where I've detailed it from start to finish, and I will put a link to that at the end of this video, as well as right here. Now let's go ahead and figure out what's going on with this freesia because I want to see what's going on in the roots. In fact, I think I can get a few plants out of this. I'm seeing one, two, three, four bunches of plants. So I can actually separate this, I'm thinking, into multiple plants. And that way, come next spring, I will have several freesias to plant out in my garden. So this is the root ball. And yeah, it's pretty root bound. That's probably part of the reason why they gave it away almost for a song is because this thing has not been treated well and it really needed to be moved to a bigger pot. Now this is the first time I'm growing freesia, so I've not got very much to share with you, but obviously it grows from a corm. These corms have actually started to divide. So I'm gonna plant each of these corm bunches in a separate pot. Hopefully next year, I'll have a whole bunch of freesias that I can plant out in the garden. I hope you love this video, folks, and I hope you give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, live green and love your greens. Now, let's go ahead. Oops, I wet my pants here. Oops.